any uh, we have a responsibility to report in the stock uh, on the stock but i don't the uh, people aren't reporting they should be we kind of have a problem right now going on with our politicians both republican and democrat no no they're not they're they're not reporting stock transactions that they've made U.S. lawmakers traded an estimated $355 million of stock last year. The stock trading by U.S. representatives and senators comes amid a push for a ban on the congressional buying and selling of public shares. Now, here's, what, here, here's why we're talking about this today. Someone like Nancy Pelosi, when her husband's not getting into car wrecks and driving drunk, Makes what two hundred and twenty thousand a year, John Clark, being Speaker of the House. Two hundred twenty-three thousand five hundred dollars a year is the Speaker how- of the House salary. Nancy Pelosi, as of two thousand and nineteen, was worth, and now this is the worth of her and her immediate family members. So this includes children as well. Is worth one hundred and fourteen point seven million dollars. Do you know that in 2021, she did not sell any of her stock, but she bought $12 million worth? Shocking. Where did all that money come from? How, how, it, how are we going to Washington? We're sitting on these committees. So we know, okay, something like the vaccine's going to be coming. We know it's going to be free to everybody. We know the U.S. government's going to pay it. You know, these pharmaceutical companies are going to make all this money, but we know it's not coming for five, six months. So we can buy it right now and just sit on it and then cash out and become millionaires, multimillionaires. Just really quickly, as of 2020, over half the member of members of Congress were millionaires and the median net worth, the median, not the average net worth of members was approximately one million dollars there is there is something ridiculously wrong well the other problem that we're running into is there's a there's a law called the stock act where these congressmen and senators they have to report on a deadline what their trades were how much they made and and all of this the problem we're running into now is that there were 61 members of congress who didn't file on time? How come nobody's what? talking about this, dude? Like, like yeah. this is, this is crazy. You know why they're not talking about it? Because I'm sure, like people like Tucker Carlson are going to tip us from Tubby Tuberman, which who names their? <laughs> Anyways, why? I mean, you don't think that these guys know the same information that their buddy politicians do? So instead of talking about this, we're going to be Tucker Carlson and tell you to go tan your junk, all right, to become more of a man. Just a few, not all 61, just a few of the people who failed to disclose on time. Senator Dianne Feinstein, a Democrat from California, was months late disclosing a five-figure investment in her hus- that her husband made into a private youth-focused polling company. I'm sure since they invested in that, Dianne Feinstein's poll numbers are just excellent, 90% all the time. <laughs> I'm sure. She's also worth $88 million as of 2019. Continue. Senator Tommy Tuberville, a Republican from Alabama, was weeks or months late in disclosing nearly 130 separate stock trades from just January to May. Senator Tommy Tuberville, net worth of $17 million. Please continue. All right. Senator Roger Marshall, a Republican from Kansas, was almost up to 17 months late disclosing stock trades for one of his children. You, you didn't you didn't know this, but the child is is only three. But you know, hey, <laughs> allegedly, 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 allegedly only three. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Roger Marshall and his wife had a net worth of 3.9 million dollars on a salary of 194 thousand dollars a year. One of my favorite politicians who I wish would retire is the one from Kentucky, Senator Rand Paul, who was 16 months late in disclosing that his wife bought a stock in a biopharmaceutical company that manufactures an antiviral COVID-19 treatment. 16 months late reporting, 
His wife buys into an antiviral COVID-19 treatment. Isn't this the same fool, fool who doesn't believe in COVID? Yeah. I mean, that's the crazy part about all of this is that, um, yeah, I mean, he was, I don't, I don't know that he doesn't believe in it, but he definitely wasn't, you know, pushing the vaccine or anything like that. The crazy part is, is that everybody who didn't want the vaccine wanted these antiviral treatments. Can't, uh, can't really figure, figure that one out, you know. Uh, and, and for what it's worth, Rand Paul's net worth varies wildly depending on who's reporting it. Uh, some report $1.5 million net worth. Uh, others have reported somewhere between 20 and $30 million net worth. So yeah, that kind of there, varies wildly. There's no way Rand Paul's worth $1.5 million. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's, he's, he's worth a lot, again, on a salary of about $200,000. Yeah. Well, you know, John, what you're missing is, is that all of these senators, they're, they're just very good with their money. They're not good with our money as people, as, sure. as a country, but they clip coupons. They're doing Groupon <laughs> activities. Rand Paul, to save 50 bucks, calls Mitch McConnell and says, hey, we're going to go zip lining this week in Virginia. If you come, <laughs> it's $35 off. Like, you know, they're just, they're really good with their money. Back to the Republicans, U.S. Senator from Wyoming, Cynthia Loomis was several days late reporting a purchase in August of up to $100,000 in Bitcoin. Hope she sold before the drop because right now that's worth about 15 bucks. Yeah, well, um, Loomis was reported, uh, now this is on Wikipedia, but Loomis is reported to have a net worth of about $12.26 million in 2015. In 2015, seven years ago? Mm-hmm. Well, she lost $100,000 just on that most recent <laughs> investment. So, yeah. Representative Tom Malinsky, a good Polish person, but he's a Democrat from New Jersey, and he failed to disclose dozens of stock trades made during 2020 and early 2021. Doing so caused a lot of people to start questioning and the Office of Congressional Ethics found substantial reason to believe that he violated federal rules or laws designated to promote transparency and defend against conflict. It was turned over to the House Committee on Ethics on October 21st, where they lost the paperwork and said, don't ask about it again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and, and back in 22, I mean, this is not his first brush with, with uh, stock trading cons uh not conspiracy but stock trading um irregularities he also invested in a once in a century health crisis back in 2020 uh and bought and sold as much as one million dollars of stock in medical and tech companies that had a stake in the virus response according to analysis of records by the associated press and when it was all said and done those stocks were worth as much as 3.2 million dollars which he did not disclose uh, and then his, uh, his net worth is been reported as somewhere between three and $5 million. That doesn't even make sense because he just made 3 million on a trade. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, they're there, the way they report assets is very, very weird. So a lot of the information that I'm getting, uh, is coming from a place called open secrets and, um, it displays the net worth of. And the, the net worth is is described as the difference between assets and liabilities. So that also includes like houses and cars and stuff like that, things that are reported. Um, and the figures only offer an estimation of wealth. And the congressional financial disclosure rules use value ranges instead of exact amounts. How convenient, right? Op op yeah. what, OpenSecrets.com, is that what it's called? Yes, it's called Open Secrets. Uh, it's a nonprofit organization based in Washington, D.C., and it tracks data on campaign finance and lobbying. I mean, how many husbands have gotten yelled at by their wife when they saw that they went to a website called OpenSecrets.com? <laughs> it's, Anyways, actually, it's actually OpenSecrets.org. Oh, OpenSecrets.org. <laughs> Anyways, Representative Pat Fallon, a Republican from Texas, 
was months late disclosing dozen of stock trades during early and mid 2021 that together are worth as much as $17.53 million. Jeez. The great representative Pat Fallon from Texas was late again in December 2021 disclosing stock trades. When they asked him why he can't get his filings on time, he said, oh. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm having difficulty finding net worth uh, numbers for Pat Fallon. But again, my guess is that he's worth a cool three to five million dollars. Well, I was going to say we definitely we just talked about. Well, we know it's over seventeen point fifty three million dollars. <laughs> bringing yeah. it back to our bringing it back to our home state of Tennessee. Representative Diana Harshbarger, a Republican from Tennessee, failed to properly disclose more than seven hundred stock trades that together are worth as much as $10.9 million. Now, okay, so we're not going to go down the whole list. Do you know what the penalty is if you fail to defile this disclosure on time? Well, here, let's, let's just, with our listeners, let's just do an exercise. Let's all close our, close our eyes um, and um, talk to each other and in a um, perfect world. I'm when, doing the hum. hum. When I, I appreciate it. Keep that going. Uh, hum. when a per, in a perfect world, hum. if a senator or congressman or woman was caught dealing under the table, making a lot of money like this, what would you think the penalty should be? You know what? If you're on YouTube, hum. comment it down below. What do you think the penalty for this should be? Or you could tweet us. Yeah, tweet us. And and now that we've went through this exercise, appreciate the humming in the background. No, Matt, I was just trying to. I'm just trying, just trying to relax everybody. Just center, center, or whatever the I, crap those, <laughs> the, whatever those crap those people do when they're trying to meditate or whatever. Added a lot of ambiance to it. Yeah. Tell us now true. what the penalty actually is for not disclosing this stuff. Uh, Two hundred dollars. <laughs> everybody who listens to this. I don't care if you share this podcast or not. I'd love it if you did. But take this information and share it with anyone who wants to fight over whether Democrats or Republicans or whatever are good for the country. If you listen to this and you don't have a problem with what's going on, because for what it's worth, the top 10 congressmen and senators that are currently in office right now if you were rank, if you were to rank them by net worth the top 10 are all worth over a hundred million dollars nancy pelosi is the 10th richest member of the con the congress and senate and she's worth 114.7 million dollars as we talked about earlier of that top 10 six are republicans four are democrats so it's not a one-party thing everybody's getting rich off this deal. Hey, Everybody John. is. Hey, John, I got to throw this one out there. Re uh, Representative Mo Brooks, who, if you remember him from January 6th, he was like, let's go storm. He's running for U.S. Senate. He failed to properly disclose a sale in January 2022 of Pfizer stock worth up to $50,000. Uh, now, John, I'm not, this, I'm, you know, hey, I'm a working class kid. I'm a high school dropout. I might be wrong. Was it Pfizer one of the vaccines? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Just so so he mm -hmm. sat in those meetings. He knew that Pfizer was going to make a lot of money from the vaccine, right? Sure. Sure. None of that was insider information, though, Matt. You know that was just, all. That was yeah, all publicly no. available. Anybody could have made that distinction. Just, rem just remember. Just remember. Yeah, I just I just want to. Tell everybody, if any of you after this think that any politician has your best interest at heart, especially ones that are in office right now, then I really hope that you can sit down and rethink your opinion. I don't care if it's AOC, who most Democrats love. That woman has made an absurd amount of money since becoming a political figure. Or Tom Cotton who a lot of conservatives like to prop up, everybody is getting rich off this, off this politics thing. And listen, $190,000, which is the average salary of a congressman or senator, 
that's nothing to sneeze at. That's a lot of money. You can live well in the United States of America off of $190,000, especially considering that most of these senators and congressmen expense every single thing that they do. They go out to dinner. They talk about politics. It gets expensed. It gets written off. And guess who's paying for it? The American tax dollar or the American taxpayer. Not only are they getting paid $190-ish thousand dollars on average, most of the stuff that they go out and buy that you and I would have to pay for, it's free because they're getting reimbursed for that crap. So if anybody can listen to this and think, yes, all of the people that are currently in political office, in, on the national stage at least, I'm sure it happens at the smaller levels of government as well for what it's worth. But if you think that any of these people have your best interest at heart, you are absolutely insane and have lost your mind. Talk to you real quick, John Clark. You've rented cars. I've rented cars. I've rented a lot of cars recently. But <laughs> on the window of a rental car, there's a little sticker with a cigarette. If you smoke in that car, it's $250 cleaning fee. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me that budget car rental has a bigger penalty for smoking in a Kia Sonata than what our government has imposed as a law and a penalty for these guys reporting late when they're making 10, 20, 30, 40 million dollars? It's disgusting, man. It's disgusting. We're sending these people to Congress to become multi, multi millionaires. It's not about serving the people. These folks will say whatever it takes to get them elected. And meanwhile, while you guys are on Twitter and breaking up your families and, and ruining holidays, debating over Republican and Democrat, just remember the person that you're defending, that you're looking like a fool on the internet for, that you, you know, can't go be around your family anymore because they don't agree with you. You're fighting over somebody who needs your vote to continue to make cash. And then they come around every two or four or six years begging for you to reelect them so that they can keep making more money.